Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me and if you have been struggling with the muscles of the facial expression how to learn all of them because i know they are really lengthy and they can get really overwhelming just because there's so many origins and insertions and actions to learn i'm sure it definitely gets hard that's why you have come to the right video as today i'm going to make it very easy for you to memorize all these muscles with their visualization and along with that we'll also study their origin insertions and the actions So let's talk about the face first. So the uh, consisting of the skin, the superficial fascia, and it actually does not have any deep fascia. The skin of the face is actually very vascular. So the wounds of the face usually bleed profusely and actually heal quite uh, quick, and that is because of the rich uh, blood supply. The second layer is the superficial fascia, which consists of these muscles and the nerves and vessels that supply them. So why are there so many muscles of the face? that is simple because obviously your face is where everybody obviously is going to look at when they first see you you need expressions you need to add color to life and that your face does by making loads and loads of expressions and that is carried out by all of these muscles so guys uh, let's begin the muscles of the face overall your face has three openings that all of these muscles are supposed to protect so the first opening is the eye or the palpebral fissure that lies around the orbits the nose the nasal openings and the muscles covering the mouth or the oral fissure all right so these muscles are going to surround these various openings let's talk about the first opening which is the eye and the first muscles that come with the eye so the first muscle we have is the orbicularis ocular wherever you will see the word orbicularis it means it's a rounded muscle the first muscle is the one that surrounds the eye the orbicularis oculi oculi has two parts so it's basically like that all right it has this a large orbital part which is covering the entire orbit and then it has a palpebral part a smaller part which is covering your eyelids all right so the small palpebral part is responsible for making eyes blink gently as in sleeping or just blinking your eyes on a normal day and the orbital part is responsible for the more uh, aggressive close of the eyes for instance you're seeing something super scary an animal running towards you so you need to close your eyes because you're just too scared right this is the orbital part and this is the palpebral part the or and there is another third part the called the lacrimal part you can actually uh, memorize that if you want but uh, remembering these two is also enough both the orbital part and the palpebral part arise from a common in origin called the medial palpebral ligament now medial palpebral ligament is basically uh, located in the medial side of this palpebral area just for the lacrimal part of this muscle is going to originate from the lacrimal fascia and the lacrimal crest that lies over here all right now let's talk about the insertion the orbital part is inserted in form of it's basically going to become round and it's going to come back to its point of origin whereas the palpebral part gets inserted in the lateral side all right it's in the lateral palpebral raph and the lacrimal part also gets inserted in the similar raft uh, actions we've already talked about that the orbital part is forceful closure of eyelids whereas the palpebral part is going to uh, gently close the eyelids the lacrimal part will dilate the lacrimal sac next muscle uh, related to the eye is called the corrugator supercilii muscle uh, is going to uh, begin at the superciliary arch we've already talked about super basically above the orbit uh, on the frontal bone we'll see the a uh, superciliary arches which are basically rounded elevation in the frontal bone on both sides and the medial end of these superciliary arch give origin to the corrugator supercilii and this muscle is like an eyebrow you can say right and it gets inserted in the middle of the eyebrow area of the skin of the eyebrow the supercilii is coming from right here and goes all the way here it's like that so you can say it's like an eyebrow when this contracts the forehead forms vertical wrinkling as in when you frown so the corrugator supercilii muscle is involved in frowning let's talk about the muscles of the nose so in the muscles of the nose we have the procerus muscle it's basically going to go and cause wrinkling of the forehead because it's it's a muscle that basically goes from the nose and it goes and touches your forehead area this is the procerus and it causes a transverse wrinkling unlike the corrugator which causes vertical wrinkling so even the procerus is involved in um, you know expressions when you're angry or frowning all right and then we have the compressor nares the compressor nares is going to run over the nose like that and the it is going to cause compression of your uh, nasal um, openings right Uh, the dilator nares obviously there are all the dilator nares is going to go from below and get attached to the that it's going to dilate them depressor septi is attached to the septum of the nose all right septum of the nose is basically we all know that there are two openings of the nose and then in the middle lies the septum of the nose right so this muscle is the name says it depressor septi it will depress the uh, nasal septum usually the depression of nasal septum and dilation of your nares is usually when you are very angry that's when you form this expression 
So these two muscles are used in the anger expression. So let's just go ahead and look at them right here. This is the procerus, all right? Uh, the origin of the procerus is from the nasal bone and its uh, insertion is into the skin of the forehead. The compressor nares comes from the maxilla. Obviously, this is the maxilla bone. So it comes from the maxilla of either side and it goes ahead and to the dorsum of the nose uh, in an aponeurosis, it gets inserted over here and it causes compression of your nasal aperture. Next is the dilator nares. This is also coming from the maxilla but from below. So in this diagram, the dilator nares is actually not visible because it's a deeper muscle. So dilator nares is going to come from the maxilla, both sides, and then it gets inserted into the nose cartilage. Depressor septi will also come from the maxilla, but in a medial, more medial area, and then it gets inserted into the nasal septum, obviously. So, and their actions literally are said by their names. Dilator will dilate the nasal aperture and depressor will depress the nasal septum as an angry expression. So now that we've talked about the nose, let's go ahead and talk about the more complicated part of your face, facial muscles, which is the mouth. Definitely, uh, mouth has a lot of muscles going on and it can get uh, too much for you at times. So for that, I've made it a little easy. Remember one thing, every uh, aperture had an orbicularis, right? Uh, in case of eye, in case of mouth. So orbicularis oris is the first muscle, makes sense. After that, uh, I want you to remember the levators and the depressors of the mouth. Obviously, because the mouth has to uh, open, the mouth has to uh, close, the mouth has to go down, right? So for that, we need the levators and we need the depressors, all right? And just add another muscle called the buccinator muscle. This muscle is very important. Remember one thing, the buccinator is your whistling muscle. One more muscle, it's a very long muscle and its name is also very long. That we'll talk about soon. So remember these main muscles of the mouth and then um, subdivisions of the muscle of the mouth is a cheek area and some others right so the cheek area has two very important muscles the zygomaticus major and the zygomaticus minor these are coming from the zygomatic bone and finally the other muscles that I just want you to remember their names they're very like random names that's why i've kept them in an others category these are the mentalis because you know you go crazy you're mental so yeah just basically related to the chin is mentalis in anatomy so obviously yeah risorius muscle that's the final muscle let's go ahead and look at these muscles now orbicularis oris originating from your maxilla and your mandible both areas all right and it is being uh, inserted into the angle of the mouth any muscle that is orbicularis has to do the closing action so this muscle is for the closing of the lip so the next muscle is the buccinator the buccinator too it's going to be a very deep muscle it has three parts it has upper fibers the lower fibers and the middle fibers right the upper fibers are going to be coming from the maxilla the lower fibers are going to be coming from the mandible and the middle fibers are going to be decussating all right and these are inserted into the upper fibers into the upper lip lower fibers into the lower lip the most important function of the buccinator muscle is that it is a whistling muscle what it does is that it empties the cheek of the contents uh, it forces the cheeks to come against your teeth so that any uh, food particle does not remain within the cheeks all right so it also causes the whistling also causes blowing uh, for instance blowing trumpets so the next muscle uh, are the levators and the depressors mouth consists of the lips right and the mouth also consists of the angle of the mouth. Angle of the mouth is what? Where the upper lip is becoming the lower lip. The angle of the mouth, right? So you need a levator for elevating the lips. You need a levator for elevating the angle of the mouth. You need similar depressors for the lip and the angle of the mouth. So how will you make their names? The, you will make it like levator, labi. Since it's above, it's superioris. And then you have the levator, anguli. All right, levator anguli, oris. Oris is anything related to the oral fissure. All right. And for the depressor, similar name, we have depressor, lebi. Lebi means anything that has the word lebi in it means lips. Inferioris, obviously because it's inferior. And then we have the depressor anguli, oris. You learned four muscles in just knowing the levators and depressor. It makes sense. So let's talk about the levator lebi superioris. It is basically coming from the infraorbital margin of the maxilla if you remember the orbit was lying right here the infraorbital margin uh, from there it comes and it gets attached where do you think it'll get attached obviously to the upper lip where it has to carry out its action right and the levator anguli oris is going to come uh, from the maxilla as well and it will get inserted to the angle of the mouth that's simple their origins insertion and action are also as easy as their names levator lebi superiors lebi it means lip so it causes elevation of upper lip 
and it also forms the nasolabial fold. So basically, nasolabial fold is this fold right here, that muscle. Then we have the levator anguli oris. It causes the elevation of angle of mouth and also forms the nasolabial uh, groove, right? Next is the depressor. Literally, their names are telling you the, uh, their actions. So there's this oblique line on the mandible. From this oblique line, um, both the depressors are going to arise, all right? So depressor labi inferioris is coming from this oblique line and is getting attached, where do you think? Lower lip. And depressor anguli oris is also coming from the oblique line and it's getting inserted, where do you think? In the angle of the mouth. Their origin insertion makes sense. And this depresses the lower lip downward, this depresses the angle of mouth downwards. These four muscles are actually quite easy, but when you look at them in the book, you probably get a little uh, overwhelmed by them, right? So, but if you remember it like this, it's quite easy. Remember one thing, since the, the depressor anguli oris is causing the depression of your angle of mouth, so this is the expression of grief. You are sad, right? Let's move on to the long muscle. What is this long muscle that has been here for the longest time? So this muscle, long muscle is, muscle is also very long and it, also has a very long name all right and since it's involved in the lip it's involved in the nose so it has to cause both of the actions of these two this muscle is known as the levator libi superioris alicu nasi elevates the lip and it lies superior to the lip and then it also has a function in your nose and it also crosses the nose so it causes the dilatation of your nasal aperture muscle that is going to be a little difficult to learn but remember it because it is a long name you should know its uh, origin insertion action just because of its name the fact that it elevates the lip and it lies superior to the lip and it lies close to the nose because it dilates the nose so its origin is from the frontal process of the maxilla it comes from right there and it gets inserted in the nose cartilage and the upper lip all right next muscles that we're going to talk about are the cheek muscles these are known as obviously what what is the cheekbone the cheekbone is known as the zygomatic bone right so from the zygomatic bone this is suppose the cheekbone and this is uh, your lips right so the zygomaticus major is a very important muscle it comes from the posterior aspect of this uh, zygomatic bone and it gets inserted into the angle of the mouth and then you have the zygoid and maticus minor. It travels a shorter distance, that's why it's minor. It comes from the anterior aspect of this zygomatic bone and gets inserted into the upper lip, just medial to the angle of the mouth. Zygoid and maticus major is going to uh, elevate your angle of the mouth, causing that smile that you have, right? So zygomaticus major is the chief smiling muscle, whereas the zygomaticus minor is just going to elevate the upper lip. The next uh, muscles are the other muscles. These are the mentalis and the rhizoreus. For the mentalis, I want you to remember that this is just a chin muscle. The uh, chin muscle is going to begin from the mandible. The uh, bone of the chin is the mandible. It's going to insert into the skin. So it's coming from deep to superficial. And the point of this muscle is causing wrinkling of the chin. And when do you do wrinkling of the chin? When you're in doubt. When you're confused on how to cover anatomy syllabus in one night. Yeah, that's the doubt that is caused by mentalis muscle. At that moment, you feel like you're mental. So we have this rhizoreus is basically coming from the fascia of the masseter muscle, which lies in the cheeks, right? And it goes to insert in the angle of the mouth. And the rhizoreus is important in, again, uh, pulling the angle of mouth upwards as in smiling or grinning. And final muscle is the muscle of the neck. And we've talked about this in the upper limb. This is the platysma muscle. It begins uh, from your pectoral fascia and the deltoid fascia. And it runs upwards and immediately gets inserted into the base of the mandible, causes the wrinkling of the uh, skin. It pulls the angle of mouth downwards in like surprise or horror or fright. It's that that is when your platysma is used. So I hope I've covered most of your facial expressions today and the facial muscles today. I really hope this video was fruitful for you. Uh, for more conceptual and anatomical videos, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And until then, thank you so much for watching.